everybody, I'm Graham from GrowthBook and we recently released GrowthBook 2.5 and I'm super excited to share some of the features that we've added in this version, so let's jump right in. GrowthBook 2.5 is so packed full of features, it's actually one of our largest releases to date. And this reflects a ton of hard work from the team and the community. And I'm really proud of the work that we've done in building the best feature flagging and A-B testing platform. So let's take a look at one of the new features, metric fact tables. Fact tables are a brand new way to create metrics within GrowthBook. With fact tables, you can create one query that returns multiple values and use each one of those values as its own metric. For example, when a user places an order, if you have an e-commerce store, you might want to have a metric for the uh, purchase event. You might also want to have one for the amount that was purchased or the coupon code percentage that was used, etc. And so with metric fact tables, you're able to create one query that pulls a whole list of columns and then create separate metrics uh, on each of those results, but it's really only one query to your data warehouse. So let's take a look at it on the website. So here's our fact tables in beta. So you can see here that we have a couple of fact tables already set up. You can always add a fact table here. But let's show you one that's already existing. So let's go into orders. And you can see here that we have different columns that are returned from this fact table SQL. We also have filters that we can, uh, we can use on top of the facts, which are reusable uh, SQL snippets. So you can see here that this one fact has three different metrics built upon it, even though it's one uh, query. In the future, we have a lot planned for metric fact tables, including the ability to really speed up performance of GrowthBook, as well as make it easy to uh, do dimensional analysis on your metrics. Another feature we've added in GrowthBook 2.5 is the ability to do remote SDK evaluations. So the way that GrowthBook currently works is that when you define the SDK in your application, you define a set of attributes about your user, and then the SDK pulls down a list of features and rules by which those should be shown, and all the evaluations in terms of which user should see which features happens locally on the SDK. Now this is great because it means that the, the SDK uh, can be extremely fast because the payload can be cached for everybody, and all the feature evaluations happen locally so that none of your PII ever leaves your servers. Um, there are a few downsides if you run this method client-side, however, and one of them is that um, if someone really wants to, they can kind of look at what rules you're assigning to which users. So to address this issue, we've added remote feature evaluation in this version. With remote feature evaluation for the JavaScript and React SDKs, you can pass attributes to the proxy or your backend server that's running GrowthBook locally and have that return a personalized list of features specifically for that user. This addresses some of the issues with exposing the rules while keeping the performance and the security of running um, everything locally on your own infrastructure. We'll be adding support for mobile SDKs soon, as well as other deployment options. So, so let's take a look at how that works within the GrowthBook application. So now when you go to the SDK connection and you go to add an SDK and you choose one of the applicable, um, applicable SDK libraries, you'll see this new option that says remote evaluation. And so if you're running GrowthBook Proxy or a CDN Edge worker, you can now do the evaluation on the Edge or on the Proxy and have that return the values. If you're running GrowthBook self-hosted, you'll have this option uh, to run directly on your server as well. One of the highly requested features that we've had, particularly for our enterprise customers, is support for Skim. So Skim is a system for cross-domain identity management and allows you to centrally manage all your users so you can add them and delete them directly from your uh, identity management system, and then have those accounts automatically be added or removed from all the different tools that you have that have Skim support. So with this, uh, all users of Okta will now be able to do this. You can add and remove users, and they will automatically show up or be removed from GrowthBook. We do plan on adding additional identity management providers in the future. Another feature of 2.5 is support for data pipelining. With data pipelining, we give you an option if you're using BigQuery or Snowflake to enable the data pipelining mode. And what this does is when you run a query for an experiment, we'll actually write some of that data back to your data warehouse to speed up future performance. With this option enabled, you can drastically reduce the cost of the queries that you're running on your data warehouse, particularly for teams that run a lot of experiments. So another really cool feature that I'm very proud of is the AI copy suggestions. So if we go over to an experiment, I'll show you how this works. So let's just grab one that's a visual experiment, and then we'll open our visual editor. 
So with the AI copy suggestions, we use ChatGPT to automatically generate some alternate suggestions for some of the copy that you select on. So for instance, here I can click on any, uh, any content. Let me just choose some content on the page. And then we have this button here on the right. And we can expand this and have it say, suggest a humorous example. And so we can apply that and automatically have a new version using AI to suggest copy. We do have ways to suggest copy in both like concise and energetic and, and different ways. Um, in playing around with this new feature, we've actually been pretty surprised with some of the results. So I encourage you to go check it out and see, see if you can improve your, uh, your website or give you some great suggestions for some, some things to test. So another feature we added is the ability to do simulations and archetypes with features. So one of the problems that people often have is that they'll set up a set of rules um, for a feature in terms of adding experiments or force rules, but it's really hard to debug that uh, without publishing it and then jumping onto your live website or a uh, test version of the website and then seeing if that's actually live. So with simulations, we'll actually show you, um, we'll show you how to simulate it directly from the feature flag page. So here, for instance, we have production. We have two rules, um, beta and then a feat, uh, an experiment. So if we go down here to simulate users, we have some archetypes and then we have uh, attributes here. So what we can do is um, basically we can add say an ID and we can turn on like if this user is a beta user. And so we can actually automatically simulate what will happen on the SDK side when this is run. Um, so you can see here that as soon as the user is marked as a beta user in production, it's going to be forced on because we have this one rule up here that says uh, force for beta users to true. Um, but if we, as soon as we disable then uh, we can see that this user is assigned to the experiment and they're going to get the control variation. And you can also test it like with any other attributes, um, what variation they would get. And then um, we'll actually show you the debug information in terms of like uh, why they got that particular rule. So that's great. Um, but what's really cool is that you can then save this attribute. So for instance, if you have like a default set of users like beta users or mobile users or desktop, um, you can save those as archetypes. So here we have um, a beta user or a mobile user, and then you can save those as different archetypes and we'll automatically show you what values they're getting off the bat. And it's a great way to kind of uh, streamline the debugging process to make sure your features are targeted correctly. We've also expanded our API. So I'm just gonna pull up the docs here. Um, so we've added the ability to uh, create and uh, turn on or off or edit features directly from the API. Um, so if we go on the feature flags, you can see all the endpoints here, like creating and updating some of the feature flags. We have a lot more uh, API endpoints that we're adding here. If you have any suggestions or ones that you really want to add, uh, go ahead and open an issue on GitHub and we'll try to get to it as soon as possible. So let's take a look at multi-organization deployments. So with Growthbook, we have a couple of different ways to organize uh, the features and experiments within Growthbook. We have projects and we have tags um, and uh, that's great, but sometimes you want more isolation between the sets of features or the data that you're using within Growthbook. So with multi-organizations, you can actually create separate organizational structures entirely different um, and then manage them centrally from a super admin account. Um, I don't have this set up on this particular environment, but um, what you can do is if you're a user, you can actually be invited to multiple organizations. You can switch between the different organizations just using the top nav. We've also improved some various other things with Growthbook. One of the cool ones we've added is on the management page. So now you can break down uh, all the experiments you have, not just look at all of them, but you can break it down like which projects are pushing the most experiments, or you can look at by, um, by results or by status, like if they're running or in draft mode. Well, I hope you enjoyed this really quick look at Growthbook 2.5. There's actually a lot more features that I haven't had time to go into. You're welcome to take a look at our GitHub page. We have um, all the different 2.5 features listed here and the code as well. Um, big thank you to everyone who worked on this and all the community members. Um, thank you so much and we'll see you next time.